and give you peace. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. We speak about um, blessing Israel because the Bible says that those who bless Israel shall be blessed and those who curse Israel shall be cursed. And be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face toward you, and give you peace. So that's the, um, I believe, the erotic blessing, which they've turned into a song. <clears throat> help me, Holy Spirit, because I had that idea years ago. Nobody wants to work with me or help me. Because they want to be in control and they want to be in power and they want to get the money and they think that I'm stupid. And when I begin to speak and they realize, oh crap, he's smarter than I thought, they quickly back up out of my face as they should. God bless you. I think of the Shema here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, which they sing in the Solomon Islands because a Spanish explorer believed that they were the people of Israel. And I believe that he was correct. Um, Israel was scattered all over the world, and I've spoken on that before on YouTube, but what I'm speaking of specifically today is the fact that we talk about blessing Israel, and yes, I believe we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but understand that those people are 3% Semitic, which are a host of people groups outside of Israel, which does include Israel, but is not exclusive to Israel, and they are mostly Persian and Caucasian, so Turkic, Slavic, and their home base was <laughs> in Ukraine. They are Khazarian. And some of them want to go there and have been speaking out about the fact that they want to go back to where they actually are from. Because Zionism is not a thing that existed before the turn of the, um, I believe that was the 20th, <laughs> 20th, <laughs> the 20th century. Was that the 20th century? Are we in the 21st century? Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes, that was the 20th century. And so before the 1900s, that was not a thing. And um, so the, the truth is beginning to come out. But of course they want to go back because there's all sorts of plots and plans of the enemy. And then God also has his plans because he is going to bring true Israel back to the land. Those who are holy, those who are righteous. And God himself will be the one to decide if each one of us is actually holy. Because some of us know we are not and then some of us think that we are, but God is the judge. Amen. And so the reality is Israel has been scattered. African-American people are Semitic. And some of these people who call themselves or that we call Palestinian perhaps could very well be Israelites because they were Israelites people who did not leave the land, did not leave the area. You won't find much about them. I saw a very dark skinned man in a pair of jeans sitting in the white a lawn share out somewhere and looked like the desert and it was explaining that they never that they never left some went to Yemen and Jordan and all these places and we were scattered all over the world but some even converted to Islam by force but they know that they are Jews and they do pray to Yahweh in their home when they're in the the mosque they let the people say the prayers to Allah and I'm sure they just pray in their heart to Yahweh I've been to Muslim funerals and trust and believe I was calling on the name of Jesus in my heart I put in my little Kufi or whatever. I had my little Palestinian looking shawl uh, sort of uh, 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 scarf thingy and okay we're going to respect because it's one of the homies in the neighborhood and passed away and he was a Muslim. Okay praise the Lord. So we're going to go on up, <laughs> going on up in, in here. But uh, uh, as I'm in this mosque and I, they're saying what they're saying and I am inside of myself talking to Jesus because that's my God. And so those who we are celebrating when Israel bombs them as there's bombings going on right now could very well be Israelite, whereas the so-called Jewish people are indeed Jew. <coughs> They're Semit Semitic-ish. <laughs> they have 3% Semitic blood, which does not even only refer to Israel, and are mostly Persian and European mix, and that is known by scientific fact. There's articles you can find them. Um, so yes, racism is coming, the black people being killed for being black, 
um, Christians being killed for being Christians, the Nazis coming back, and all of these things, as always, I suggest you guys go read Celestial. I, I just like the fact that it's very plain and simple and easy to read and easy to understand. Very easy to understand. She writes it all out. You can read it or you can watch the videos on YouTube. Um, and I just, for myself, I know my life experiences and what God has um, shown me in the word <laughs> lets me know that she's re really hearing from God. Also, the fact that I continuously see the confirmations, the actual fulfillment of prophecies happening almost daily. It's like once she speaks it, the Lord says, okay, thank you. Now I'm going to do it. And a lot of it is confirmation. Henry Groover. Hmm, I'm thinking of the elders. Dimitri Dudeman. Oh, my God. Off the grid, desert, whatever his name is, was talking about Dimitri the other day. And he said that when America goes to war with China, Russia is going to strike <laughs> without warning. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. <laughs> Terry Bennett, Edward Umling, Jeff Barely, Mina Lee. Oh, I don't know what the name is. It used to be Grabbin. She got remarried. I'm not dealing with that right now. <sighs> Pastor David Wilkinson, thank you, Spirit. <laughs> I didn't forget about you, Pastor. I didn't forget the Lord took you away from us. How about Ndo Shoko? My grandmother, who when y'all tried to go over there to Afghanistan, which was never making sense to me, because you told me Saddam Hussein. I was in New York that day. I stood on the roof of our apartment building in Harlem, and I watched the Twin Towers smoke for days. I was out there. Watching it smoke and I heard Jaws say to me That there was five white men in a van and then you cut the news off and got rid of that Asian woman and went back to the studio Then I come to find out that those five white men were sent back to Russia Found that out on YouTube So when Apostle David E. Taylor says that it was Russia that bombed us on 9-11, I know it's to be true. I don't want to hear about the Arabs that they hired and worked with as a cover. We've been at war with them. since They have never stopped warring with us. <clears throat> and by the time I reached Washington, D.C., the news, everything that was being said on the news in Washington, D.C. was not what was being said in New York City. I saw that white van with my own eyes. But you sent them back to Russia because, again, the Bushes, the man who purchased the building, changed the insurance policies. And even crazy Donald Trump explained that that type of metal is not supposed to melt because it was a special type of metal. Now, understand they've been new. He was going to be president because Kamala Harris' sister said when she was in Wisconsin being molested by Donald Trump, y'all knew then he was going to be president. So I'm not even getting on him right now. What I'm saying is that the thing with him is he's a part of the New World Order, but he wants America to be the leader of the New World Order. See, that's Donald Trump's problem. He wants America to be the, the head of it and he wants to be the leader of it. So that's why they don't get along. That's why the Democrats and the Republicans, that's why, that's why they hate Donald. Because he's with the plan, but he wants to rework the plan because he is a true narcissist. He's a, he, he, he wants to do it his way, and there's already a plan. And he agreed to the plan, but then start trying to flip the script. And they're like, okay, we got a problem because this is an issue. So like NBA Youngboy's mother, who is the sister, the half-sister of Kamala Harris, said... Y'all knew he was going to be president. I know you're not going to upload this. <laughs> you're not going to let me upload this because you, you keep trying to shut all my communications down. It's okay. It's okay because it's the truth. The spirit world hears me. God can hear me. The devil can hear me right now. So it, you can't shut it down. It's going to be spoken whether you upload it or not. 
Y'all knew then. And so when he talks about the fact that the Twin Towers came down, that's only because him being a New Yorker and him knowing that the mafia controls some of that, which is why his buildings got built when the workers, the steel workers who are Masonic, were on strike in New York City. They built Trump Towers, but they wouldn't build nothing else. So he knows what he's talking about. His father was a very wealthy man, and you cannot be that wealthy in New York City without being involved with the mafia. Let's have some common sense or at least go watch the daggone Cotton Club movie and learn something. Pick your movies better. I like to pick movies that I know are going to show me the real. I just watched how they trafficked this girl today on this movie and learning from Tupac's daughter. I said, yeah, this is exactly how they do it because she said out of her mouth, it be the school teachers involved. So when, as soon as this movie came on, I predicted the whole movie because as soon as this lady came over to my, so she the school teacher, I said, oh, she's with the traffickers. And of course, that's what happened in the movie. You know why? Because the people who make these movies know what's going on because when you want to sing and dance and be a movie star, then just understand that you are submitting to being raped and worshiping the devil by force because they're not going to give you nothing in Hollywood unless you do it. I know this because Felicia Rashad's sister-in-law told me to my face, Jerome, Hollywood is a real hellhole. No, a, uh, uh, no, Jerome, I say a real hellhole. Uh, no, Jerome, uh, no, listen, I, I'm telling you, a real hellhole. She said it just like that three times because I talk too much. I talk too much, so she had to say it three times to really get it through my thick skull. A real hellhole. You may be listening to YouTube videos, and maybe that's the only place you're getting your information. But for me, by the time I get on this YouTube, and somebody tells me something, I already know it's true because I have experienced things that some people don't know about, and most people can't handle my stories. They get, it's a little bit... It's a little bit stomach churning and it's kind of gross. And so some people can't, most people, most people, even if they listen, <laughs> they can't, they really don't want to hear it because it can be a bit gross. And I'm thinking they don't realize I'm holding back. <laughs> I'm holding back the details, but I've experienced enough and met enough people to know, okay, these are not just something that somebody's making up. So like I said, I saw with my own eyes that white van <laughs> on the news and I got to Washington, D.C. And all of a sudden, instead of going to Iraq, y'all was talking about a dag on Afghanistan. I will never in my life begin to understand why. But guess what? That's why the Lord had to show me. No, let me let me show you why, Jerome. You don't understand because it's a lie. And I did not create your brain to digest lies. That's why you don't understand why all of a sudden they're going to Afghanistan. But you told me. <laughs> so then it was, oh, because Bin Laden has run. And his is this is the person who's really doing it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, so now we get. But then, but Bin Laden is from an oil family. And his family was close to the bushes. And they was in my city, Washington, D.C., when it all happened. And y'all flew them out. You flew them out of Washington, D.C. Because the Bushes is friends with them. So don't tell me you have to go over there to catch them because you got his family. Hold his family hostage. But see, you like to play games. And so while all that was being figured out, <laughs> lies, and it take years for us to know something, 10, 20, 30, 40 years before you even begin to know something, what I do know is my grandmother said, I don't know why they're going over there because the terrorists are right here. And she kept pointing her finger to the ground. I still didn't catch on. And she sang it to my face. The terrorists are right here. But I am still thinking she means in America. It wasn't even until after my grandmother passed away that I, the memory of I'm seeing her point her finger to the ground and understanding, oh, no, 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 baby, you misunderstood. When she said right here, she means right here in Washington, District of Columbia. They right here. So when someone tells me, oh, there's hundreds of spies in Washington, D.C., I know it's true because my grandmother said they're right here. So when you storm the Capitol and people are stealing papers, I'm saying, how many Russians 
was in that audience with their face covered up with the rest of these so-called patriots. And how many of them, how, oh God, here go another question. How many of them are working with Donald Trump? How many of them do Donald Trump know was there? Because he was sitting in the office laughing like it was cute. But y'all did not impeach him. All of this is going to be judged. All of this is going to be judged. Because you're absolutely right. When you bless Israel, you will be blessed. But you have cursed black people not knowing that we were Israel. Not knowing that when God sent us into slavery, it was because of our sins. But you was never supposed to rape people. Teach them the Bible and then don't live by the Bible. Still cheat, mistreat people. Because the Bible tells you how to treat your slaves. And you're supposed to treat them like family. The only bad problem is the slave has to obey you whether they want to or not. They have to work for free. They have to serve your God. They have to learn your customs. So yes, learning English and all of that kind of stuff and, and not knowing what country we came from. And that was a part of the curse, you know. But the good parts, because God is always working it for the good. So the good part is that we were supposed to learn about Jesus and we did. So you, 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 you was guilty of mistreating the slaves in a way that God did not allow because he punished us, but you tried to add insult to injury. And then you was guilty for not living according to the Bible. And then you were stupid enough to teach us about the Bible so that we became Christians. And so now you're also guilty of mistreating your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you think that God is going to let you win a war with China? You're not. Because you, you won't even, that's, that's one subject. I'm not talking about ten subjects right now. I'm keeping it on one subject. I'm keeping it on one subject. You won't even repent in your heart for that. Because you keep saying, well, that was so long ago. And that was before I was even born. And that has nothing to do with me. But the Bible says the curse goes to the third and fourth generation. So when the third and fourth generation don't break the curse, it goes back into another cycle. So it is on you, saith the Lord. And so for that alone, we're not even going to talk about the abortion, the homosexuality, the trafficking, the pornography. The I mean, I, like I said, I can talk to you about all of that. But for right now, we're talking about let's just keep it on one. Even if it was just that one simple thing, because the way you treated black people. And you don't even know who Israel is. And you celebrate when they are over there shooting at those Palestinians when they might be Israelites. And you go around the world oppressing people. Who are also, because we are in India, we are in the Polynesian Islands, we, Israelite, Israel is scattered. And it ain't that you don't know because the Bible dictionary says that Negroes, which is the word for black people, when the Zondervan Bible dictionary was written, they didn't call us <laughs> African American, they called us Negroes. It specifically says in the dictionary that Negroes are not Hamitic, they are not African. It says that in the dictionary, once again, my grandmother been telling me that. Baby, we did not come from Africa. Well, we came from there, but that's not where we started. I don't know. She might didn't tell nobody else, but she made sure to repeatedly tell me throughout my life three different times as a child or sometimes as like a preteen, sometimes like my late teens and in my 20s and then sometime in my 30s, three times in my life. And I remember, baby, we did not come from Africa. The third time she said, we came here from there, but that's not where we started. So I don't have to listen to the videos of the Hebrew Israelites because my grandmother said. And so for that alone, God is going to let the Chinese people come into this country and fight on this land and kill people and take people into slavery because you reap what you sow and you won't repent. You won't even admit that she was wrong. You have not apologized. You have not given reparations to us nor the Native Americans. And you want to keep talking about Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. And be, he's not being gracious to you. He's not. He has not called for peace. The Bible says woe unto them who are at ease in Zion. And to the false prophets who say peace, peace, when there is no peace, that the, the woe unto you is a word in the King James, which means judgment unto you. When you keep talking about everything's going to be peaceful and God has not said that, he's going to judge you for that alone.
but you rather have it your way. So, have it your way. All I'm saying is I want silence. When the Chinese get here, because I'm not going to have nothing to say. That's when I'm going to, you want to know when I'm going to shut up? That's when I'm going to shut up. When they get here, I'm going to slip on my slippers and I'm going and I'm doing whatever, because because God has sent them. And even my own sins is a reason he is sending them. So I, is, I might as well just go and shut up. Just like Jeremiah told my ancestors, you might as well understand the king of Babylon is coming. So you might as well go serve him. And while you're serving him, plant some food to eat and make some babies because you're going to be there in slavery for a long time. And don't fight and don't run. But we ran. And we ran into Africa and we hid for 1,500 years, 1,500 years. And sure enough, the British, who they say are descendants of the Assyrians or the, the Amorites, that's why you have America, and the dragon serpent god Amaruka, who they worship, worship in southern parts of America, Amaruka, or whatever, however you pronounce it. And so then they call this America, tr- c- related to the Amorites, who was always our ancient enemies. And they say that the British are related to these ancient people called the Amorites, who was always our enemies. They say the king of Egypt was actually a Amorite. So it's the same bloodlines chasing my same bloodline. It's nothing new under the sun. I'm trying to figure out where is your pastors with all their PhDs. Because I'm because if you ask them, they're going to say, oh yes, he's correct. And they're going to feel some kind of way because they paid so much money to get PhDs. And they will look and say, well, how does he know all this? I know all this the same way Jesus Christ knew everything he knew. Because God the Father... They tried to come for him and judge him too. Well, isn't this Mary's son? I know his brothers. I know his family. He acting like he's so smart. Like where he, first of all, he ain't even ever been to school. Because like I said, I know his whole family. That's what they said about Jesus. So of course you're going to say it about me. But ask your scholars. And ask the people you do know with PhDs. And they will be able to tell you nothing. But okay, yeah, he is actually very correct. But So they're going to agree with the historical parts, but they're going to be mad about the fact that I'm saying you can cancel everything because it's all coming down. Because God is not happy. He's not happy, but everybody thinks that they're righteous and they're holy and they've done nothing wrong. And God said, your way is not my way. So you should have automatically thought, okay, well, I think everything's fine, but have I actually said, okay, God, what are you not happy with? Did I do, am I doing anything wrong now? You don't pray those kind of prayers. Because God, because then you might be scared he's going to act now. You, now he can show you. Are you upset with the country, God? Now he might, can, so then when you start having the dreams and the visions, and he starts to show you, that, that may, but see, you, you have not because you ask not, and he already knows you don't want to know. I didn't want to know, but some of us was called from birth to know. I would have preferred my mother aborted me, to be honest, because aborted babies go straight to heaven. I would be in heaven right now with my grandmother, never existing on this earth. She would have never known I existed. The first time she met me would have been when she got to heaven, and I would be saying, I'm the baby that peaches aborted. And I was in heaven being raised by Jesus. And your mother and the rest of our family here in heaven. And I learned all about you and was waiting for you to get here. That would be my testimony. But God saw fit to use my mother's pride. Because she was, a you know, she's about image. The Broxdales, they're about image. And so when she ran, when once she saw somebody who knew her face and she didn't want them to know she was pregnant. She ran up out of there and then she tried to reschedule. It was too late. Shit was too late to reschedule. So the next step was, damn, now I got to marry this IRA. Because I refuse to be a a non-married woman having a baby because it's about image. Well, praise the Lord. I guess. Because that was his plan. I would have preferred. Because again... To have a call on your life and to know that the people refuse to listen. Why am I still here? 
just just because just why so that I can keep wasting my breath because I feel like that's what I'm doing because at the end of the day I have realized that no matter how many times I say this I cannot stop what's coming I in my mind I thought I could stop it if I just can get the people to listen when Donald Trump ran for president I said you know what <laughs> I'm going to ignore the fact, and God forgive me, I'm going to ignore the fact that God said, decoy, and he showed me a duck. You know, my mom likes ducks. God got a sense of humor, because my mother loves Donald Trump, and she also loves the Duck Dynasty people who love Donald Trump. And the Duck Dynasty people actually make fake ducks to put on a lake so they can shoot the real ducks when they try to come around the fake duck that they put there as a trap. And a decoy. So God has a sense of humor because I used to have to sit and watch that show with my mother. And I guess he did that to me because I kept, I decided to ignore God when he said decoy. Because I was hoping that, well, they said Donald Trump is working with the Russians. I'm glad because if he's working with them, that means they won't bomb us. That was my hope. And that was that was your hope. That was your hope. That's why you keep supporting Donald Trump because you think that he can stop the Russians. You think that he can fix the economy, but he cannot because God has already decided that it must crash. And Donald J. Trump is not going to be alive very soon. I'm getting off with that because y'all are not ready. <laughs> like I said, you don't know who I meet and what they tell me. But I can say that by the time Jeff Barley prophesied the the... The Twin Towers falling. And by the time he prophesied the SS Reagan and the SS Lincoln being shot down, I was able to say, yeah, because I met that man and I had that conversation. And like I told him, y'all might as well plan a funeral. His eyes got jet black and he realized he should not be talking to me. He didn't know why. He probably thinking, OK, who else? He is from D.C., and I'm in Congress, so who else in Congress might this man be sleeping with? Because y'all like to run y'all mouth. Just like the other person in Congress who told me that they had spit in Candela Rice's face. This was years ago. He said, oh, you know, they took him underground. <laughs> They're going to take him up underneath the jail. You already know that. Oh, trust me, he's going underground. I thought that man was speaking figuratively. I had no idea that there was anything underground. I did not know that he meant literally. But sometimes political people for some reason think I know more than I do. And so they run their mouth because they're trying to get information. But they don't realize I don't know nothing. So what you're doing is snitching. You telling me stuff you shouldn't tell me because for some reason you look at me and you think I know something. But that's because the devil knows what my real purpose in life was supposed to be. Because there has to always be another Martin Luther King Jr. And people are wondering why there wasn't. Because here I am. Nobody had the money for schooling. Nobody knew what was God's plan for my life. Nobody even imagined that God could have something like that planned. My grandmother knew. So she did everything in her power to just keep me alive. <laughs> she did everything in her power to just make sure that I lived. But when the devil is working all around you, there's many of us who God had plans for us way beyond. We might not know till we get to heaven. When he's saying you were supposed to be the president, you were supposed to find the cure for cancer. But instead of finding the cure for cancer, you started smoking crack. You wanted to do ballet and be gay, but she was supposed to be the next Martin Luther King Jr. These are things we're going to have to answer for because on Judgment Day, we're going to realize, oh, my God, I was supposed to be so much greater. But see, the devil knows. And so sometimes these people who have witchcraft spirits can just see who I really am supposed to be. And so they start running their mouth or asking me to, they do it to my whole family. Like we, I'm, and I'm thinking we are poor people and we have no power. So why y'all always want us to be in charge of everything? Because we were supposed to be. <laughs> because we were supposed to be. My aunt, that's the, that's the commissioner should have been the mayor. But the, I, I like the one we got now. She's cool. But she wasn't supposed to be the mayor. My Aunt Deborah was. <laughs> she was not supposed to be the mayor. My Aunt Deborah was. But we make choices in life. So, yeah. He said, oh, they took her up underneath. They're going to take him up underneath the prison. They put him. I thought it was a figure of speech. 
Because jailbirds always say, oh, they're going to take him up underneath the jail. And I'm thinking that's just something people say, not realizing it's a real underground for real. Until my father goes to go build it. And he refuses to go build it. And then they and then they and then all of a sudden they can't find no more work for my father. And then so they don't wrote him down as being a pastor who is not a part of the crap they're doing. He doesn't want their money. He doesn't want to be a part of their cults and in masonry and doing anything just for money. He's not one of those kind of fake pastors. And so they stopped giving my father's jobs at the at the the steel workers or whatever, the iron workers or whatever. I, he probably don't even have his Pentagon clearance no more. Because once they realize that I don't come from a family of sellouts, I don't come from a family of people who will do anything for money, we, I don't come from a family of people who can be bought because Louise B. Thomas raised all of us better than that, that's when all of a sudden things change. And so they watch my videos and they hate me and are so afraid of what it is I might say that I haven't said yet. All I can say is stay tuned. <laughs> Ow. Stay tuned. We're not going to win this one. I asked you guys to leave the country in 2009. I said, if you can afford it, leave the country. If you can afford it, leave the city. I've already had dreams and visions about them taking me away into prisons underground ever since I was a little kid. Before I knew of a FEMA camp, I, the Lord would show me visions of me being taken away. And I didn't understand, wait, how are we getting under the ground? This is weird. My mother says, well, son, sometimes you dream stuff and it's happening to you in the dream. But that does not mean it's going to actually happen to you in real life. That sounds very sweet, mother. But I'm not banking on it. Because John the Baptist told that man, you are a sinner. You're having sex with your brother's wife and they cut his head off. The devil argued for the body of Moses. So I do not in one at any I don't believe. I don't believe that my fate as a prophet will be any different than any of those who have gone before me. I don't believe it. That's what they want me to believe. In fantasies. I wasn't brought up that way. My grandmother taught me. Hallelujah. To reign with Christ. <laughs> You've got to suffer with Christ. She laid in this room and died. Painfully in cancer. Wouldn't even take the pain pills at first. As she was in pain. Bleeding. The urine smelt like actual ammonia. I had to hold her hand as she took her final breath. She cobbled. There's nothing you can give me. If I became a trillionaire today my grandmother is gone I care about nothing I told God this as a child I did not want her to go before me God said to me no not in so many words that gets complicated he just was very angry because you know how a person can communicate without saying anything where God communicates with me sometimes and allows me to know how he feels 